I'm Dr. Wolf. I am a forensic pathologist, and I'm going to talk a little bit about strangulation and what we look for in the pathology of strangulation. So if you've watched a lot of forensic files or you follow true crime at all, when you hear about strangulation, a lot of people think about the hyoid bone. And this is what a hyoid bone looks like. So it's a U-shaped bone that sits on top of the larynx. And the hyoid bone is important, but I want to talk about a few other findings in strangulation. I also want to note that there are different types of strangulation. There's manual strangulation, which refers to strangulation with the hands, and there is ligature strangulation, and that would be like tying a rope or a belt around someone's neck and strangling them that way. What we're going to be talking about here is manual strangulation. So with manual strangulation, you're going to look for things like bruising of the neck or scratches of the neck. Also, the person who is being strangled very often tries to pull the hand away, if they're conscious, to pull the hand away from the neck. And when they do, sometimes they'll cut into their own neck and form little arc-like abrasions that we call fingernail marks. That can, of course, be an indication that the person was fighting back. Another important finding on external examination are what is known as petechial hemorrhages, okay? Petechial hemorrhages are these little red dots, and this is the eyelid pulled down to show that. Now, these can be in the eyelids or the conjunctiva, or they can be on the surface of the face, the head, uh, on the orbits, on the cheeks. You can even see them in the gums if you retract the lips. You can also see uh, bites of the tongue. Sometimes if the person is struggling and the tongue is protruded forward, occasionally they'll bite it. Now, from an internal examination perspective, you're going to look for hemorrhages within the neck muscles. Now, these are called the strap muscles of the neck because when you reflect the skin back, they actually look like straps on the front of the thyroid and the larynx and on the sides. So you're going to look for hemorrhage or hematoma in there. You're going to look for the rupture of those muscles. You may also have rupture of the cartilage. Uh, which would be like the cartilaginous rings of the trachea and also the larynx itself. You can open the larynx and you can also look for hemorrhage of the vocal cords, the vocal folds. And sometimes there's a hematoma or bleeding behind the larynx where the larynx is being pushed against the spinal column. And of course, we have to consider the hyoid bone. Um, when manual strangulation around the neck puts pressure from the lateral sides, it can snap this. Now, the important thing to note with strangulation is not all these findings are present. Some are and some are not. Ultimately, the way that strangulation works is the blood is cut off to the brain. The presence of decomposition can make the determination of things like hemorrhages and scratch marks very difficult.